Yeah, I'm Kelly Williamson. I'm a professional triathlete. I've been um, competing as a professional since 2002. Um, I live in Austin, Texas here, and uh, I have, um, gosh, I've done everything in, in the triathlon realm from starting with um, ITU with um, the draft legal format back in 2002, lived at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, um, and then did that for a while. In 06, my husband and I moved here to Austin, and I started doing non-drafting, um, non-drafting, and you know, gradually gravitating towards Ironman racing. So that's what I've been doing about the past five years. Um, I guess some of the achieve my biggest achievements have been uh, uh, way back. I was 2002 Pan American champion ITU, and that was my rookie year racing, and qualified for World Championships that year. So that was kind of a big year, and then I had lots of bumps along the way, broken arm and um, just kind of getting my feet wet with all that. So um, flash forward to, gosh, um, 2010 or so when I did my first Ironman at Coeur d'Alene, got third, qualified for Kona. So that's when kind of my Ironman racing kicked off. Um, and since then, I guess the biggest things I've um, 10 time uh, half Ironman distance champion, various, you know, rep three and uh, uh, 70.3 and such uh, and then most recently last year at Ironman Texas I won that and a 9, uh, 854 so that was definitely a big um, PR for me there so um, yeah and then currently I'm focusing on mostly 70.3 and Ironman. Um, it's funny you ask because I think it was yesterday I was thinking about my training and I thought to myself on, on average I would say most days I would say I train approximately four hours. Um, I don't usually do it all in one clump. Um, typically it's a get up, drink coffee, do a morning workout, um, you know, swim, bike or run, eat some breakfast, um, usually head out, um, you know, mid-morning for a second workout. and. Most days, I'd say, are, are two solid workouts. Um, I'm not really one that does swim, bike, run every single day. So I've actually been with Recovery Pump for about four years now, so um, it's actually almost hard to remember what I did prior to that. Um, but before, I think it was just the basics of um, rolling your legs out, ice bath, you know, stretching, um, probably just laying down, elevating my legs a little bit, um, you know, nothing, nothing really magic. I didn't have another system before this. So, um, you know, I kind of started with recovery pump as my first, uh, you know, compression device, um, you know, maybe compression socks before that, but again, nothing quite as, um, as robust as what I've been able to use with this. And ironically, I also started with you guys, um, about the time that I started doing Ironman. So right when the training load and volume started to really go up, I, I also had the advantage of, of having the system, so. So on a, on a regular week basis with regular training load, um, I would say my, my training is structured usually, so hard days are hard, easy days are easy. So um, usually those hard days entail a hard bike or run in the morning and a hard bike or run in the evening. So typically I go out and ride in the morning and then um, sit in the boots, come home at lunch, um, sit in the boots and usually then I'll probably do about an hour or so. Um, usually a little higher pressure um, when I know my legs are really sore or fatigued. Um, so probably what used to be 80 and now I would say like 90, 95, uh, maybe even 100 um, uh, pressure on them. On, um, after a really hard session like that. Um, I like the 60 minute time frame because I feel like it's long enough to where it's effective and it, it flushes my legs really well, but it doesn't kind of make me a little sluggish by sitting in them too long, just not moving. Um, and then I'll usually have that other hard session in the evening. I don't always get them in, in them post that second session because it might be like dinner time and shower and do all that stuff and I'm kind of running around a little bit too much. Um, but then I figure if I'm gonna be laying down and sleeping soon thereafter, at least I'll be elevating my legs. Um, in terms of other workouts, I would say the other main time I make sure I have them is after the really big sessions. So like the weekends, a five, six hour bike ride. Um, usually it's a bike and a run. So I'm looking at like six, seven hours of training. So I'll, I'll get them at, in, in them after that. Similarly, usually high pressure and, um, you know, 45 to maybe even up to an hour and a half, depending on how tired I am. Um, and then the, the other way I use them is sometimes I'll use them before a race or before 
a morning workout, so that might just be I wake up and um, I might just get in them for like 20 minutes and at a, a slightly lower pressure, so maybe like um, 70 to 80, um, you know, on a setting on that. So again, it's kind of various ways, um, but yeah, typically I try to take them to all like my, my really big races and. If I'm driving, they'll always go with me. But when I fly, it's, you know, I try to try to carry them on as often as I can. Yeah, no, it's it's super simple. I have a bag that actually my sister bought me, and it's just a kind of a shoulder bag, um, and they actually fit perfectly in it. And it's 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 pretty compact. But I mean, I can um, unplug everything. I mean, I can probably break the whole system down and have it in that bag um, in less than you know five minutes, a couple minutes by put the system in, roll the boots up. Um, previous system, I would put a Ziploc bag, I would put the, the tube in a Ziploc bag and I would put the legs and a rubber band around them. So you can can break it down super quick and, um, and it can pack really small, which is nice. I can just throw it over my shoulder. And the nice thing about the really new system too is that it's a little lighter and it might not be much, but when you carry it on your shoulder, you know, for a trip, you definitely notice, notice it, so. And in terms of um, security and such, never any issues. Frequently, it just stays in the bag the whole way through. Um, I would say maybe half the time they might take it out and look at it, but I've never had any issues with it. It's funny, at first I always had to like make sure I had an outlet and then I realized I, I kept forgetting that I didn't have to. So yeah. I would say for the most part, I will use it without. But then when it starts to get down to the bottom, then I'll plug it in, let it charge, or you know, use it a little bit. But it is pretty nice to know that, I mean, that's huge to know that you don't have to be like attached, you know, somewhere within reach of an outlet. Yeah, of course. I mean, I coach a handful of athletes, so I've told my athletes about it. Um, I've had some of them try mine, you know, they've sat in them. That's always a good way to get people a little bit hooked on them. Um, I, why simply because you know the way i see it is like we put so much time and energy and, and money and effort into the training we do and to me this is you know yes everything costs money in triathlon it's not an inexpensive sport but this the way it comes back to you is, is so um monumental because you know you can get a system and for the cost of what you would pay for how many massages you know say 10 massages and you can use this all the time so to me it makes total sense um it i think it just really it uh, allows you to train just train just as hard or harder and recover better. And what I've found is really come back to that second session in the day and really hit it a lot more effectively. So um, of course I'd recommend it. And and I've seen some neat crossovers too, to where I know a handful of people have multiple sclerosis, and I've seen some of them use it and see um, you know like my aunt who can't use her legs a lot, but she's able to put the boots on, sit in on a very low pressure, and you know get. A little bit of energy in her legs that she can't get otherwise so it's pretty neat to see it not only effective for you know serious endurance athletes but also for somebody in her situation and you know see that crossover